These are the news files. These are the news files, Mary, mm. organized by boroughs. A list of contacts of local TV and radio stations. Your phone, your desk. After the chaos I've been living in at Channel R, it's wonderful to be where there's some organization. Oh, don't let us fool you. We're as confused as anyone. <laughs> handle local press only, right? Just the city? Uh, that's a theory. In reality, it's something else. I don't care. I was part of Frank's first real campaign when he ran for the city council, and I love being back here again. What should I do? How about a press release by 10.30? 100 words on Frank's tour of proposed Westway site, including brief summary of his position on the current controversy. I'll get some coffee. Thanks a lot. You'll have it by 10. Hi, Mayor. Good morning, Senator. Uh, uh, I think I like Frank better. Mm -hmm. uh, glad to have you. It's good to be here. Late night? Uh, tough night. The best laid plans and all of that. Well, what do you think of the facilities, hmm? Terrific. Hey, what's going on? Doris, uh, it's just the usual business. Jill? <sighs> Seneca. I was supposed to meet Jill out at the beach house last night, but I had to cancel. Later on, I started thinking about how badly we needed to be alone try to talk some of these things through so i went out there anyway you're not saying seneca was there ask again oh he was upstairs and jill was in the downstairs bedroom i'm no oh, wait it was the other way around he was downstairs jill was in the upstairs bedroom but even so i got mad said some things that i probably should not have said damn i know mary i have found seneca with her just one too many times mm -hmm. Well, anyway, I came back to the city, Jill followed, and we went at it again. And instead of making things better, everything is now worse. I'm sorry. So am I. Jill says that she doesn't feel that she and Edmund are important enough to me now during the campaign. And she's afraid that if I am elected, that she and Edmund will be even less important. Edmund makes a big difference, doesn't he? Yes, he does, which is why I spend every bit of time I can with them, sometimes more than I should. Which Jill probably senses. She probably also needs to feel that she and ha Edmund have some real significance in the scheme of things. I understand that, Mary, but I don't see what I can do about it. I cannot be all things to all people. I'm going to need every bit of energy I can if I'm going to stay on my feet long enough to get elected. Doesn't Jill understand that? Doesn't or won't, I don't know. I'm not certain about anything anymore. anymore. The only, I really only know one thing, and that's that things are not good. And I especially don't like Seneca Bolak's part in it. Finelli is now being played by Kathleen Tolan. Sorry to bother you. Is Roger here? Uh, no. No, he's at the hospital. Why? Well, I have a rather complicated message about the air conditioning man, and I'm also supposed to find out if he's got any problems down here. I don't think he does. I mean, he might have problems. He just didn't mention them to me. Look, Tom, would you like me to go over to the hospital and I can uh, ask him? Well, since I work over there, why don't I ask him myself? Okay. Thanks, anyway. Have a nice day. Tom? Yeah. Look, if you don't mind, um, it's kind of important. 
Do you think you could not mention uh, to Faith that you talked to me? Why not? Well, because I'm not supposed to talk to you, that's why. What? See, I don't think Faith would have had you deliver a message if uh, she knew that I was down here. Would you mind telling me what this is all about? Why wouldn't Faith let me come down? Because of me. Because I'm here. Look, Tom, I got into a lot of trouble because I went upstairs and I talked to you. You did? Yeah, I don't think Faith liked my talking to you about her and Patty, so then you got mad. And look, I didn't intend for you to get mad, really. Well, I was a bit unsettled, that's true. Yeah, then Faith got furious, so she came down here and she started telling Roger about it, and then she said that if I ever do that again, she would put me right out of the house. So that's why it's pretty important that you don't say anything to her. Faith didn't have to do that. Oh, don't be mad at her, though, okay? Just, just promise me. Promise me, because you get mad at her, you get into a fight with her, and then you're bound to say something about this, and, um... Look, that's why I, I, I just don't want you to say anything, okay? I promise I won't say anything. I don't want to make trouble for anybody. Neither do I. I mean, neither does Faith, either. You see, uh... She likes you a lot, she doesn't want to hurt your feelings, and... Look, I have to admit something. She, she was right. I never should have said anything about, um... Faith and Patty, okay? Do you think that we could forget about Faith and Patty? Yeah, uh, I can try, sure. I, I know Faith is trying. Well, then, I think we'd all try. I'll talk to Roger later about the air conditioning. Uh, Tom? Um, you know, it's not Faith's fault that she can't forget about Pat. Why do you say can't? Okay, look, it might take a long time. I don't mean forever, it just might take a long time. I'll tell you what. what. Why don't we make a little pact, you and me? A pact? I won't say one word to Faith about talking to you, and you won't say one word to me ever about Faith and Patty. See, I upset you again. Let's just say that you're coming around to a topic of conversation that I would just as soon avoid. Now, Roger was absolutely right. I am mixed up and I am absolutely obsessive about Patty. Faith and Patty. Yeah. Um, look, uh, she's not the only one who can't forget him, okay? Thank you. Now, I hope that will be the last time that you'll ever mention his name to me. Do you hear what I said? Yeah, sure. Never again. Is that clear? It is. Look, I'm sorry that I upset you like this. I wasn't... You know, Tom, I think everything is going to work out really great. Really. It's okay. Somebody will be in any minute, so we won't be alone long. I have to wait for Bucky. My lucky day. If I sit down, no heart to heart, right? Nope, that's not on the menu today. All I have to offer you is half a cream cheese and olive sandwich. Mmm, don't tempt me. <laughs> How are you? I haven't seen you in a while. I've been all right. Working hard, trying to pay back some of the shifts that Bucky took for me when I wasn't in such good shape. How are you doing? Fine. Just fine. Glad to hear that. What are you and Bucky up to? Oh, he's treating a little girl I asked him to look at. Bicycle accident, nothing too bad. Mm, that's good. It's funny being with you in person. I think about you all. Pat. Sorry. Hey, have you noticed something funny about Bucky lately? No. You sure? Yeah, why? I don't know, but something's going on. He seems distracted, as if he's worried about something. And there have been a lot of phone calls from Boston. Well, have you asked him about it? No, he doesn't want to be asked, I can tell. No one talks to anyone these days. I guess it got too dangerous to talk. Or too painful. Pat, that doesn't help. No. I'm sorry. 
This is just as hard for me as it is for you. Is it? Yes. Hey, I thought you were going to offer me half your sandwich. Well, I didn't think you really wanted it. Cream cheese and olive isn't everybody's cup of tea, you know. Well, it's mine. <laughs> oh, you look mm. hungry. Well, I wasn't. At least I didn't think I was, but now I'm starving. Uh -huh. Good. Well, tomorrow I'll bring you two sandwiches. I'll bring two sandwiches. Uh, maybe I better not. Thanks for the offer, though. Don't say anything more. I know. I'm going to tell you about my grandfather's police revolver. A subject of endless fascination to all of us when we were growing up. <laughs> okay. But was this the grandfather that was killed in the holdup when Johnny was a little boy? Right. <clears throat> well, all he left behind was his shield, an American flag donated by the department, of course, and an enormous gun, which Da very carefully hid. And keep away from the children. Only Frank and Kathleen found out where it was and used to go look at it. Mm, I hate guns, especially around children. Mm. I wish you'd hit it better. Yeah. Well, the barrel was about that long. Well, one night when uh, Mother and Da were downstairs working, that old man Donald still owned the place then, and mm -hmm. Da was a bartender and Ma did everything else. We were all upstairs asleep, and Frank and I in our room, and Mary and Kathleen and Siobhan in the other, and there was a burglar. A real burglar? The kind that comes in the window carrying a sack and starts to pick up everything off the tables. Yeah, we knew all about burglars. How old were all of you? Frank was nine, Kathleen was eight, I was five, Mary was three, Siobhan was just a baby. Well, anyway, Kathleen woke up because she heard noises in the living room. Sneaky noises, she said. So she woke up Mary and they came in to get us. A real burglar. What else could it be? So Frank snuck down the hall to the parents' room. And he got the gun out of a big box that Doc kept it in up on the top shelf in the back of the closet. And Pat, I hate this story. Yeah, well, I guess we all thought there was safety in numbers because we all followed him tiptoeing down the hall to the living room, to the doors, and took Frank a couple of uh, hands to hold the gun because it was so heavy. And when he finally got ready, Kathleen threw the living room doors open and we all shouted, Stick him up! Well, what happened? Well, the burglar, who turned out to bear a great resemblance to our mother, oh. was standing in the middle of the living room holding eight hand-painted <gasps> dinner plates, which had been a gift from her grandmother on the occasion of the burglar's wedding and immigration to America. Oh, no. So when we all shouted, the plates went straight up into the air, and there was a good chance she was still going to catch them until she turned and found herself looking straight into the barrel of Grandpa's 44, <laughs> at which point the plates all came crashing down on the floor, and we all went dashing back to our beds, leaving Frank standing there holding the incriminating weapon. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, as you know, no, in our house, anything from Ireland is very precious. Well, of course. So Mother didn't know whether to laugh or cry. <laughs> she ended up doing both. Oh. Frank got a terrific spanking for even touching the gun. We haven't seen it since. Oh, poor, brave nine-year-old Frank. <laughs> oh, Tom, what are you doing here? Looking for you. Oh, well, come in, sit down. Hello, Tom. Just telling Faith an old family story. <laughs> Don't know if I can tell it again. <laughs> That's all right. I'm not much in the mood for stories. It's a cash on 1080p. Digital prices nationwide every day. I know for certain is that Jill is worth the Senate in a dozen elections. Are you saying I have to choose? No. Well, that's what it's beginning to feel like, Mayor. Which is really frustrating because we had been making such good progress. And you'll keep on making progress. I hope so. Don't let campaign nerves and exhaustion mess it up now. That might be part of it. But I tell you, if I don't start seeing more of Jill, and a lot less of Seneca Bolak than... I mean, if things are 
This rough now, imagine how bad they'll be by November. Somebody ought to take you and Jill and lock you up in a basement. <laughs> I know just the place. Yeah, I bet you do. I wouldn't get elected, but we would certainly straighten some things out. All you need is some time together alone. Yeah. Hey, Good hey. morning, everybody. Hey. Mary, how is the new second press assistant for New York City? <laughs> Terrific. Couldn't be better. I like a positive attitude. <laughs> it's one of the first things I spotted in your brother here when he was running errands for... Rafferty, the old block captain. Uh, yeah. Remember, get you some coffee, Mr. Feldman. You want some papers, Mr. Feldman? Oh, those were the days. <laughs> you were 14 and you thought I was gone. Actually, that's pretty close. Here, sit down. <laughs> I thought you were a prophet. I used to imagine you in a beard and robes leading us all through the Old Testament desert. In an earlier life, who knows? <laughs> right now, however, we have a harder trip to take. I have got to lead you out to meet the district leaders of Nassau County tonight with Mrs. Woodard there, if humanly possible. I don't know, what's it all about? Well, this is our crisis for today. Just now, it seems that your two staunchest backers out on the island aren't speaking to each other. Uh, you want me to play peacemaker? Well, who can play it better? Frank. Frank, this is important. An organization that's working together can deliver a lot of votes and divided. Yeah, yeah, I'll tell Ray. What time? Nine o'clock. I don't see why we can't make it. Good. Well, only, only I don't want to bring Ray out there without briefing her ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Well, how about this? I've got to take Nancy out to the airport after dinner anyway. Why don't we all ride out in one car, drop Nan off, and then go on out together? I'll brief Ray as we ride. Fine. Why don't we use my car? With pleasure, completely. How is Nancy, Dave? She must be almost finished with school by now. Graduated last Friday with honors. Oh. How wonderful. Congratulations. I'll accept them. We got her all the way through. <laughs> In partnership with the bank, of course. <laughs> no graduate school? No, no, no. No graduate school. Now, listen, she says she wants to be a dancer. You know, all the time that she's been working with the college dance groups, I thought there was a boy in it somewhere, mm -hmm. and it really was the dancing. Does that bother you? I love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mary, she is so wonderful. When she is on that stage, you don't look at anyone else. Ah, uh, you wouldn't look anyway. Now, this last year, she was the featured dancer in one production and directed another. That girl has got something. Where is she going now? Off to her first job, Summer Stock in Indiana. Oh, that's really terrific, Dave. Oh, uh, we're just... Tickled. <laughs> Nancy's got a good head on her shoulders. She's, she's a hard worker. She knows what she wants to do. She, oh, that's enough. Goodbye. <laughs> okay, good. I'll tell Ray all about this set of okay. Fine. Thank you. I appreciate that, Frank. Sure. Thanks for coming. See you. Get to work. was just telling me about his grandfather's revolver. Yeah. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Would you like some sandwich? There's still a quarter available. No, thanks. I went by the cafeteria looking for faith. I had something to eat while I was there. Oh. Were you uh, step around? able to get a hold of the air Hi. conditioning man? Yeah. I gave you a message to Roger here in the hospital. Oh. It's for you. Oh, thanks. Yeah? If someone's looking for faith, do they automatically call the neurology staff lounge? Fine, Bucky. No, I'll be right down. Thank you. Well, I guess my little girl's ready to go downstairs. Good. See you, huh? Sure. Talk to you later. Well, that just about wraps it up for lunch. Don't run away. I don't believe that's what I was doing. Before you leave, I'd like to make myself clear on a couple of points. The other day when I asked you to stay away from faith, I meant it. We do work in the same hospital. There are times when we will meet. I think you better hear me out. I realize that you're still in love with my wife. It's, it's possible that she's still in love with you, and I can understand why you love her. I love her myself. 
There's been no talk between us about love. But there's been entirely too much other talk between you. Do you recall assuring me that you would keep your distance from Faith? Well, I'd like to see you keep your word. You don't have to have cozy little lunches together. You don't have to tell her old family stories. I'm tired of looking for Faith and finding her with you. I don't blame you for being upset. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a lot more than upset, and I think you better understand that. Now, you've had your chance. You chose Delia. That's true. And this isn't a case of two men in love with the same girl, because that girl happens to be my wife. And I intend to keep her my wife for a very long time. That's between the two of you. It is, and it isn't. Because right now, you keep making yourself a third party. I certainly don't mean to. Well, mean to or no, I'm telling you for your sake and for my sake, keep away from faith, unless you have specific medical business. When you're finished working together, make yourself scarce. There's no shortage of nurses here. Okay, Tom, I got your message. You damn well better. I'm Greg Barrett. Sometimes it's better to get relationship advice from someone who doesn't charge by the hour. Starting tonight, relationship advice will never be the same. A new SoapNet original series, Greg Barrett's Wake Up Call, premieres tonight at 10, only on SoapNet.